Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. Um, yeah, it's this social distancing. It's um, not easy. I had my daughter um, send me a WhatsApp today and she goes, oh, do you want me to come over and give you a hug? And I thought to myself, oh, isn't that sweet? But I had to warn her that now, even though they haven't said so, um, the lockdown is not just in London, it's nationwide as of this week. So I had to say, um, no, but it's a nice sentence, nice sentiments. Actually, I think I'll FaceTime her later. But yes, um, it is a time when people are starting to realise just how difficult it is. And to be honest, I haven't spoken to my daughters as often as I have since this has happened, especially my youngest daughter. So it has brought people closer, or at least um, some people closer. Some people, they're at each other's throats and it's just like, nah. But anyway, enough of that. I hope this video finds you all in a satisfactory um, state of mind, given the circumstances. Um, it's easy for people to say, oh, you know, just ride with the storm, it'll soon be over, this and that. But the reality is it's a very difficult time for a lot of people. And I was watching Panorama last night and this guy said, I've got a son and I've got a daughter and I don't know what I'm going to do. And a grown man, he couldn't, you know, he had tears in his eyes as he was going. He didn't even want to be interviewed. And you know what pees me off about? People who interview people who are under stress at their worst moment, that is the time that they decide to ask people, oh, so how do you feel? What does it feel like? And, you know, it's almost like they want us to see that emotion, those tears, that, um, what do you call it? You know, the trauma that someone is going through. Why would you do that? You can see somebody is upset. It's a very upsetting time for everyone. and Everybody's trying to hold their own in different ways. And, you know, it's unfair for journalists to go around interviewing people that are obviously devastated by what's happened. They've got no control over what's happened. And yet they're going around asking them, oh, how do you feel? They know damn well how they feel, but they want to see a grown man cry. That's what they want to see so they can spread it on the bloody news. On the, on the news. And it's not fair. And that's not true for all journalists. Of course it's not. But the one I saw last night, it was really sad because they, they interviewed two people who were, you know, one, his business was shut down. He said he's had the business. I think it was in Ireland. He'd had the business for years. And he said it's the first time there's been nobody in and he doesn't know what he's going to do with um, his, um, his staff. He's thinking about keeping um, two on for certain days a week and another couple of his staff for another sub couple of weeks but you know you can only do that yeah you know two days for two sets of staff and then the other start two staff they do a separate day if you see what I mean so supposing um two staff go in on Monday and Tuesday and then his other two staff go in Wednesday and Thursday and I guess the third staff go in Wednesday Thursday Friday and Saturday or whatever which way they do it but it was a nice way of him keeping the staff um and it's, it's the only way he can, um, it's the only way he can do it. And it's breaking his heart that he can't keep his stuff. And he knows the penalty. Well, not the penalty. He knows what's going to happen to them when he tells them finally, when he's got no money, that it's over and he can't keep them anymore. So that's the reality of some people's lives at this time. Catholic bishops, um, Catholic bishops, because of the coronavirus and people are being deprived and they, you know, normally the 10 days during Lent, Catholics can um, deny themselves and they sacrifice certain things. But because of what is going on, um, Catholic priests say um, they can eat meat um, during Lent on Fridays during the crisis. So they don't feel so deprived. I think meat is one of the least things you'd want to eat during this time. But hey, 
if it's deemed as um, something that you would really enjoy and it makes you feel better, then, you know, that is what they're suggesting. What else have we got? Lamar Jackson, he's the Ravens quarterback. He's suing Amazon. Of all, He's going against the big guns. I remember when um, Bill Cosby wanted to buy NBC. They felt as though he was going to put out the big guns and he got his, his, his life turned around so quickly. So apparently Amazon has been selling unlicensed merchandise using his registered trademarks without his permission. And so he now wants to go and sue. I'm not quite sure if this is the right time, but whatever. I mean, it's times like this. It's what is important. I mean, suing because somebody's used a label in this time. I mean, ordinarily, all things being equal, everybody you know, um, working, the economy is stable, then, yeah, maybe go for it. But now, at this particular time, well, maybe there was no time. Everybody has different priorities. I just think that, well, I won't even say any more on that because maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe this is the time. Maybe when, you know, he's feeling vulnerable, he feels as though he should get his share for all the work he's done. And he is entitled to that. But, you know, sometimes I tend to look at maybe the bigger picture because I think a lot of what is happening now is because our focus is on the wrong thing. And we tend to um, look at look at certain things in our lives and put emphasis on it when we should be putting emphasis on something else. And so we go through life with our priorities skewed. And then something like this helps us realise what our priorities are or should be or should have been. And but then, you know, it's gone out the window. You you kind of lost control. So um, E10, petrol could cause engine damage, so they say, to certain types of cars. E10 is a urethane petrol. It's coming out, it's supposed to be rolled out next year. Um, it's made from renewable renewable energy, and it's used in Australia, USA, and Europe. Apparently, the older cars like Volkswagen and Golf and Nissan Micros are incompatible with the new fuel. So um, I'm not quite sure what will happen with those cars. Um, there was something else I want to talk about: put cars and petrol all in one. But I don't want to forget that one. So oil is going negative. Um, there's nowhere to send it. That means the prices go down, but there's no one to buy it because no one's driving because we're all meant to stay in our homes except for the key workers. So we might go out and see petrol for 60p and think, oh, my God, I wish I could buy some petrol, but you can't because you're not supposed to be outside. But, yeah, um, Russia and US are set to fare the worst, apparently maintaining oil wells makes no financial sense at this time. Um, oh, yes, more about cars. Car tax 2020 is going to change. If you've got an electric car, there's no charges. You get a tax break. And owners of zero emissions get a tax break. But anyone over and above, like mine's a 1.0, and I'm not paying any tax on it at the moment, but I think as of probably as quick as next week because that's the new tax year, new financial tax year. I'm not quite sure when it takes effect. But um, I might have to pay about 25 or 35 quid. I don't know. Um, there's costs on all other vehicles. If it's not zero emissions and it's not an electric car, you're going to be subject to uh, increased car tax charge. Vehicle emissions will be calculated using a worldwide harmonised light vehicle test procedure for the first time in 2020. So I don't know how... Um, How that's going to affect you or your car or what type of car you have. I guess the most, the more high the litre is your car, the more money you're going to pay. Uh, PNP calling on Jamaica to declare a state of emergency. Apparently it's the right thing to do. So all governments seem to be complicit in locking down everywhere. Um, 
they have 39 cases of the coronavirus. So they're going to go on emergency, state of emergency. Apparently, you know, video conferences like, um, I don't know, would they call um, FaceTime a video conference or is it just Skype? Anyway, video conferencing apps have gone up. Uh, 62 million video conference apps have been down downloaded a week. I'm not really into FaceTime. I mean, I'm, I'm going to do it with my daughter, but I don't like FaceTime at all. I don't like any of those, pe those people that call you up. I just don't answer it. You know, like on WhatsApp and your video calling me. I'm just like, Psst. just either end it. If, if they can't call me on um, voice app, I mean, on voice call, forget it. I'm not into all this video conferencing, unless it's a meeting, an official meeting, and you're prepared for it. But, you know, don't be surprised if we even know face call. So, yes, yeah, so the 62, for some people, they love it, you know. That's how that you know you see a lot of films where or adverts where people are looking at each other and talking to each other and it's almost like they're in the same house. Maybe down the line I might get used to it, but right now it's not my bag. Um, what else is there? I was wondering how this economic crash is going to affect the rich. It just came to me because I'm thinking if the rich depend on the poor to run the economy, to run the businesses so that they can make their money and they can make their profits. Because normally the rich profit off of the poor, but if the poor don't have anything and if the poor can't work and if the poor don't can't run their businesses, how do the rich make their money? But there again, and if all the shares crash, but then I'm thinking a lot of the rich, if they have had foresight, will invest in Artificial intelligence, probably that kind of rope, well, artificial intelligence, what else about biometric science and technology and medicine. And in the, if they invest in that, which is the way of the future, maybe they'll be okay. But if they haven't, I guess this will determine the rich from the real rich. And who those who have made wide, wise investments as opposed to those who have not made wide investments. The thing is, is that this is going to trickle down big time. It's trickling down big time. Uh, Virgin Engineers, and this is what I mean, trickling down big time. Virgin, would you believe Virgin Engineers? I don't know if it's just Virgin, but apparently Virgin Engineers are considered key workers. Why would they be considered key workers? Is, isn't broadband a luxury or is it, well, maybe it's a necessity, especially now. But anyway, regardless, they are considered key workers. And the thing is, I'm thinking to myself, the majority, I'm sure 99.5% people have broadband already. So this isn't the time to be changing your broadband service. I would have thought, but then if your contract has ended. But anyway, what I'm getting at is that Virgin Engineers, they feel at risk going into homes where people are self-isolating and having to install equipment. What the government is saying is that you must ask them if, they're self if they are self-isolating, if they've got any symptoms, and then you can go in. But the thing is, is that what about the latency period? All of these... The latency period must be just about lapsing now and people are going to start showing symptoms now. But maybe by the time that the engineer goes into the home, there are no symptoms. And then, you know, he's left and then two weeks later, he's got symptoms. So should they be going in with PPE equipment then? Protective clothing equipment, if that's the case. If they're... If they're um, considered key workers, then they should be protected, if that is the case. Well, that's just my opinion. Um, apparently, they're rolling out gigabyte-capable broadband, and that would probably, be, um, it, it probably require 5G connectivity. Maybe that's why it's considered... Uh, Here's the top search result. I didn't ask you anything. I hate that when the phone does that. It kind of freaks me out because it 
just makes you know that they're listening to you. <laughs> listening to you and you haven't even asked them no question. Oh. Anyway, um, a gigabit, a gigabit, right? Um, a gigabit broadband offers a speed of one gigabyte per second. They're super fast, so um, they are considered key workers and must continue working, even though the engineers are really concerned about their health and well-being, which is understandable. So. If they're considered key workers, just like any key worker who is mixing with the public, they need to have um, the proper equipment and protection. Uh, so the British government has created a special unit to deal with online misinformation surrounding the corona pandemic. The rapid response unit is being run by the cabinet office at number 10 Downing Street and is attempting to tackle everything from misinformation about the virus to criminal fraudsters running phishing scams. I mean, the amount of phishing emails I've received. I am so glad that I'm not that type of person who is um, who feels that they've arrived and therefore oh, all these people want, to, me to, want me to advertise their products. I don't trust anyone who's sending me any email about, oh, you're going to promote my you're going to promote this product and you can talk to me. Um, we can discuss. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. So if there are any advertisers out there who are sending me emails like that, I'm not interested. It's not even half of them. When I go in and research the name, it's a derivative of a professional company. Trying to rope people in. It's so, uh, it's so sad that people will do that at this vulnerable time. And depending on your mindset, if you're desperate, if you, if you kind of, um, I suppose now is desperate for extra income and you get scammed into things like that. You know what I mean? We all need extra income, but you can lose what you have if you don't have foresight and if you don't check and if you don't double check the sources. Maybe some of them are authentic. I don't know, but I've got to the point where I, number one, I don't know how you, you how you got my email address. Well, I do know how you got my email address, but I don't know why you're writing me in that, t in, in the way that they write or the way that they type, I should say. It's like there are lots of pages about their bloody product. Product. There's nothing personal about it. So you know they're sending it to about 100 and goodness knows how many people. And it's just not, um, it's just unfair that people are like that. There's people out there trying to prey on the vulnerable. And they probably will get people who will click on their links, but don't click on any links. If they're authentic, they will leave a telephone number. They will have a checkable address in the email. And you'll be able to check the website. Well, some of these websites are so bloody brilliant anyway. But you can go to Companies House, check whether or not they're authentic, make sure they've been in business for a very long time. And then if you get the feeling that, hmm, yeah, or like say if it was Amazon, then yeah, maybe. But the fact of the matter is, is that these companies that you've never heard of, no telephone numbers, no address, no, you, I'm not interested. Okay, when, um, okay, so the, what prompted that was they are looking for fraudsters running phishing scams. And you know, they're also looking for people who are um, giving false advice about how to get rid of the coronavirus, like, holding your breath for 10 seconds as a test to see if you've got the coronavirus or gargling for 50 sec 15 seconds. They're saying this is false advice and this is what they're looking for. They're clamping down on criminals and these are what they're calling criminals to exploit public concern during the pandemic. But the thing is, is that I don't think that these people think that they're criminals when they're offering advice about you know the gargling or oh, we're holding your breath it's a bit stupid 
But, you know, you have some people saying if you gargle with salt water or stuff like that. I don't think they have any criminal intent. I think probably it's because they're old, old wives' tales. And, you know, like sometimes when you go on, you even Google some of the old wives' tales or the, uh, are they called old wives' tales? You know, like grandmothers and remedies and you, things like that. And people, you know, grandparents will always say, oh, have honey and ginger and... And so a little bit of rum and, and mix it up and it, you're good to go. You know, grandparents might say that. You know, it might work for them. They might think it works for you. It's gone down through the generations. People decide to share that information as as a cure for, that's normally the common cold because the coronavirus wasn't around those days. But I think when people share that information, it's really just because they feel, okay, it worked for my grandmother. It's worked down generations. So therefore, I'm sharing that with you. So, but you just need to be careful now because um, this organized, this um, rapid response unit is looking out for people who are declaring or claiming that whatever they're concocting can cure the coronavirus because it's misinformation. It's not tested and there's no evidence so just be careful what you are putting online. Anything to do with the coronavirus, you have to be very, very careful because there is, this is a time when people are vulnerable. That's why I've changed my tone. There is, this is a time when people are vulnerable and you cannot, you know, nobody needs to panic more than what obvious. Everybody's got their situation where they are you know, feeling vulnerable, feeling scared, feeling alienated, feeling abandoned. Everybody's got this kind of feeling, whether you feel abandoned by the government, abandoned by friends, regardless. A lot of people are going through their own traumas. They don't need anybody giving them false information and making them panic worse. Me now, I'm not even looking at my WhatsApps. If I can tell from a quick Glance. Sometimes you can tell whether it's something funny, like if you might see a little animal or you might see a cartoon type thing, then maybe I look at it. But I am not getting into all of these videos that are telling me about this person has died, that person has died. It is too much. And it, it, it wears you down. It wears you down. People, I think people are well intentioned when they're sharing that, but they're not thinking about the impact it has on the recipient and their state of mind at the time. So when you're sharing something, especially about the coronavirus, if it's not lighthearted, don't share it. Nobody wants to hear at this point about conspiracy theories. They don't want to hear about um, how many people are dropping dead. I mean, for information, it might be it might be your thing. In that case, watch the news once a day. But don't watch it incessantly because it can affect your state of mind. And just be sensitive to how people are feeling these days when you're sharing information. OK, so with regard to getting paranoid, is it paranoia when you're cleaning your home? I think I'm not quite sure if I've done this. I think I have. But just make sure that if you have been outside and you are mixing with you know, in a public supermarket, that when you come in, you do make sure you wash your hands and you clean your door handles and, you know, stuff like that. If there's more than one of you in the home, it's even more important because you don't know where the other person's been. So you just have a welcome home, um, a welcome home greeting. I saw a video, I think it was in, I don't know if it was in some Latin American country, where this girl, she came in on a motorbike and she bought the shopping and he took the bag of shopping from her, sprayed the bag with the disinfectant spray and took that inside. And then before she could come inside, they all washed her down, all these buckets of soapy water. She was swimming on the steps, soaked in. I mean, that is extreme, but, you know, that is what it's got to, you know. We don't have to go to that extreme, of course not. But, you know, that was a light-hearted way of saying, you know, you don't know what you're bringing in to the home when you've been outside. And that's why it is 
best to self-isolate when you can. For key workers, it is much more difficult because they do have to go out and mix with the public. And they are, like they said, putting their lives at risk. So living in fear, we can't live in fear because the problem with living in fear is that it trains your brain to start imagining scenarios and outcomes. When you live in fear, when you're frightened, you kind of think the worst case scenario. And it's fine if you think the worst case scenario for it to be um, less, um, less traumatic if it doesn't happen in an ordinary, you know, all things being equal situation. But in times like this, when, you know, some fears are actually valid, it's best to try and minimise those feelings because your brain will do over time. It will think the worst. And you will not be able to come up with solutions because you'll be paralysed. Um, what else was I going to say? Concerns grow and they become overwhelming and they can preoccupy every aspect of your life. And yes, that's what can happen. You know, that, that man that I saw on Panorama last night, you know, he's got to the point where he's already um, fearful of his future. At that moment, all he can think of is that he's got two children and a wife and he's lost his job and he doesn't know what he's going to do. He's probably thinking at this point, not that it's going to be over in three months and what can I do? We don't know if it's going to be over in three months. We don't know when it's going to be over. But even if he could think that far, it might stabilise his brain. But all he's thinking, now, I can't pay my mortgage. I can't do this. I'm going to lose everything. And that is what the majority of people are thinking. They can't see beyond that. And when people live from week to week, month to month, waiting for that paycheck, times like this are devastating. And the brain, when you're living in fear, the brain doesn't know what's real from what's not real. It believes what you tell it. If you tell it everything, you're going to lose everything and, every, that, you know, you don't know what you're going to do and everything is terrible and it's going to believe that. And you're going to end up with those outcomes where if you tell your brain or train your brain to think, OK, this is the situation. OK, I might have to take a loan. It might increase um, in interest rate in a um, certain amount of time. Am I willing to take that risk? Is it worth the risk? Think about the risk before you do it. I mean, there are options and they could be risky, but there are always options, always options. Like I said, I saw some loans, I think they were 1,260% or I, I can't remember the exact percentage, but it was really, really, really high after a certain, the APR after a certain time. And I just thought to myself, bloody hell. There are some people who are going to be so desperate that they're going to take that card or whatever it was. <sighs> so your daily habits will be a product of what is going on around you. And you're going to have to teach yourself how to respond to it because things are going to be happening around you and you're going to be reactionary. You have to stop and think about how am I going to respond? Is the way I'm going to respond going to affect my partner? Is it going to affect my children? Is Am I going to start feeling bad or even worse because I've said A, B, C, D and E? So even at this time when you're feeling vulnerable and alone or, you know, disillusioned and all of these emotions that come up, still try to think before you speak. Because these people in your home are going to be your bedrock. Whether you And this is the time when you're going to get to know them, probably for the first time. Because for years, people have been living with people and they don't know them. You can be going out with somebody for years and you don't know them. And it's times like this, you will fast know who you're with whether it's for good or for bad, but you will definitely know who you're with when you're on lockdown 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
So try to retrain your brain daily. Try to stay positive, positive affirmations. I had to do that last night. After hearing three sets of bad news, I decided enough is enough. My head was thinking, I just can't deal with all of this stuff, all this negative stuff. And I had to try and will myself. And it was still hard because my brain kept on um, shooting out and, you know, I couldn't concentrate, still trying to do the positive affirmations before I went to sleep, but my brain couldn't concentrate. It kept on falling back on the news I'd heard. And so, but I had to pers persevere, persevere, persevere until I felt a sense of calm. And like I said, this time, it's very difficult to think positive. But if you don't train your brain to, with positive affirmations, it could just be that I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to be courageous through this. I believe that things will work out. I believe that this too shall pass and it will. Whatever the affirmation that is good for you. That is what you need to say. It could just simply be, I am feeling stronger. I am going to feel better in the morning. It could be anything, something simple. But don't go to sleep with negative things on your mind because that will perpetuate day after day after day. Uh, to be more productive, build structure and your, some routine in your home. Um, be more focused, concentrate on your plans and intentions for the day. I mean, you might say, what plans and intentions? I'm just at home. There are things in the home that you could have done for years and you haven't done, even if it's dusting down your books on your bookshelf. There's something in your home that you could have done years ago or ages ago and you haven't done. Now is the time. You can get your house spick and span. I mean, the other day I went into my kitchen and I emptied all the um, cupboards where all my plates are and I cleaned in there and, you know, washed everything, washed all, you know, all of those little things that need to be done and you never have time to do it. That's what you can be doing now. Busy your mind, find things and put on some music and just prepare. Prepare your mind and try to focus on something or something to do and to be more emotionally stable calm your mind try not to react quickly i've already said that count to 10 try to find humor you know whatever it is laugh at yourself find things that makes you smile what what's been making me feel better is that i have been getting more humorous um um what's that posts which is so much better that i i too share and so it just lifts people's spirits just a little bit. They reckon laughter is the best medicine. And I believe it is. A laughter and a smile is the best medicine for anyone that you can share with anyone. Um, and before you speak, remember this situation is nothing personal. This is one of those situations where regardless of your ethnicity, your gender, your health situation, regardless of your protected characteristics is affecting everyone i just wanted to uh, close with this all seeing all knowing wise ruler you are not shocked by the state of the world right now historically man has not listened but instead followed their desires from the rich to right down to the poor every one of us is somehow complicit in this current situation whether we choose to expect accept responsibility or not we have chosen to ignore our instincts. We have deferred discipline. We have been selfish and thoughtless. Many of us have been too trusting of people in power, too complacent. Now we have to reach inwards to our inner strength and resilience. We need to believe that there is something bigger than ourselves. And we need to take a moment in silence to hear the direction or instruction of the bigger of the universe. We can be guided or we can be steered. It's your choice. That's all for now. Bye-bye.